Welcome back guys, we're out here in the greenhouse. The day after we built our Jean Payne heater, I've already shed my sweatshirt, it's warm in here. We've got our space heater, our compost space heater running. It's pushing 62 and a half degrees and it's about 63 degrees in the greenhouse. The sun just came up and activated all those systems so it did not take long for it to circulate the air of the greenhouse and really heat this thing up. So we're gonna check out all of our heating systems. We're gonna set up our water systems for today. We're gonna link up all of our water, our copper and our PEX and stuff and run all of that to the overflow tank and run all of our water through our Jean Payne heater and see what kind of temps we put out at first and we're gonna get all of that set up and show everybody how we're running it off of solar power. So if all that sounds interesting to you, please consider subscribing to the channel because that's pretty much all we do. So let's get into today's video. Everything's looking wonderful. See our steamy little potato box here. I just love checking these guys out every time I come out. Thing looks awesome. Everything's growing well. We gotta hill up some soil on them. Everything's looking good. Just like to give an update as I walk through the greenhouse here. Everything looks really well. This morning, everything's sprouting. It's lettuces and shards and stuff. A nice pan of all the beds here. So coming on down, we've got our little space heater running and this thing is pushing 62.8 so that is catching all of the air i can feel the warm air blowing in here that feels nice so it gets warmer than that this is the first day after we set this up so it is pushing the air from inside our greenhouse through here and back into the greenhouse let's go check this out we're going to take our thermometer with us here Stick it up in the pile in a shade spot so we can see it. So we've came up to about 105, really low in this pile. There's a lot to the heap and we're trying to get to the center, but this is so far out from the actual center. You can see that you know, it's steaming, it's hot in there, but it's only like a two, two and a half foot stick to measure thermometer here I should say so you can see we've got our solar panels kind of scattered I had to scatter them yesterday because of the tractor when we had to get the tractor in here I didn't want any lines ripped up or torn up you can see we got lines on the ground and stuff so we set these solar panels up on top of this once I put a tarp on there I just put this one up there so I could experiment with all the systems and get everything running properly today and get some good sunlight to it so it's still showing good hundred some degrees all the way around through the whole entirety of the pile. So we're gonna get these water systems set up here inside the greenhouse so we can transfer everything through all of this right here. I gotta get this corner cleaned up and all of the wiring situated. We had replaced one of our eco-worthy solar controllers because we had a lightning strike that had fried both of these. We had a lightning strike on the tree right out back and it fried both of these. They both went haywire and didn't want to work correctly. I don't know what happened and that's all I can chalk it up to because it had to be some type of surge in the ground or some type of grounding issue when the lightning struck. So that's all I can chalk it up to. This one is going haywire. I'm going to take it off and use it in another panel to try and experiment with it, see if I can get it fixed. But I have a replacement just like this one for over here. So we will have two running solar panel systems there, 200 watt systems to move water through our John Payne heater. And we also have this other solar panel system. This one runs all of the fans in the greenhouse. This one runs several fan systems. And today I actually want to show everybody we've got several more fans that showed up these are waterproof they run like three to five watts and if we have a hundred watt solar panel we can power a ton of these fans off of just one panel and one system so we're going to make a bank of all of these waterproof fans we've been using one behind all of our bricks throughout the winter time and it worked great it's waterproof it's heat resistant best of all so we're going to make a bank of these and experiment with a lot of ways to pull heat off of this stove this winter with all of these extra fans we got we're going to make some type of array for these and we got ourselves a nice ac dc powered timer here so we've got a mechanical style timer. That mechanical timer will be able to be plugged in. It's got everything it needs and the directions. So 
We're gonna set this up. We used the timer last year, which was an electronic one. It was super cheap and it fried out very quickly. So our system runs through it, but it doesn't actually do the timer. After the first two months, it stopped actually doing the timer. So whenever the solar system kicked on, it would just run. It didn't have any type of timer mechanism, but this one's a little bit more. I think it was like $15, $20 or something like that. And I'm just gonna test it out and see how well it works. We're gonna get into that later on. Not today, won't be setting this up. Just showing everybody I got a nice little timer because timers are nice to get longevity out of your solar power and your heating system. So we've gotten up to 65 degrees coming out of our little compost heater, which is pretty darn cool. That's interesting to me. We're already blowing good heat out of there. So we use a lot of compression fittings. Compression fittings use a little collar that slides over your copper with a compression fitting nut. And then we got our compression fitting that I had to cut off of our copper because it was all junked up with stuff and it might have gotten twisted on there somehow and had something in between it and it's just locked on there now. So it will not come off and I couldn't get it off at all. So I ended up having to buy new compression fittings and I even got myself a three-way compression fitting so I could possibly run water from one pump to my Jean Payne and to my stove all the time. But we don't use the stove as much as we rely on our Jean Payne heater so I'm not going to use this right now. I'm going to be continuing just this one copper tube getting it attached to our pump everything else is hooked up. All I have to do is hook up the pump to the line to the inlet and then it will flow through that compost pile. So one important tool is a little pipe cutter. This is very very valuable for making good clean cuts on your copper without bending it and keeping it the perfect diameter. So using that little tool I had cut myself a scrap piece of copper here and we are going to go ahead and we're going to bend this up a little bit. We're looking for a upside down U shape, kind of like a parabola. We'll taking, so we'll be taking this piece and we'll be butting it right up and we'll be connecting those two pieces of copper with one of those compression fittings. First thing we slide on is our compression fitting nut and then we go ahead and slide our little compression fitting ring, our little collar on there. So we'll go ahead and do the same thing here. We've got our compression fitting nut slide the compression fitting collar. So once we've got our collar sliding on freely, we take our actual compression fitting there and we slide everything together, keeping it all nice and tight as we attach it. And the tighter you get it, the tighter it gets and it does not come off and it actually puts a compression fitting onto the copper and it doesn't come off there. So we will use tools other than your hands to tighten this down all the way so we don't have any leaks. So once you take some simple hand tools and tighten these fittings down a little tighter, that way they do not come apart, you take your next piece, slide it in, collar, butt it all the way up, and then we slide our compression fitting nut on and we are almost 100% attached here. So we've got our 300 gallon per hour, 350 gallon per hour pump and we really downsized that to uh, one quarter. This is actually a 3 8 fitting but the inner diameter is one quarter. So it's really getting downsized so we're controlling that flow rate, keeping it at about a gallon per minute. So this is very, very successful for us last winter and we're going to continue using the same exact parts. So these little bilge pumps for your boat, they are pretty darn cheap and they are pretty reliable. I've had one that lasted like 10 years so far. So that's pretty darn cool for a simple little $20, $30 pump. We've got all the fittings. You've got your shark bite. This is one of the more expensive pieces here. So the shark bite grabs and then you've got fittings to get to connected to your compression fitting. So there was a couple little fittings here and there, but other than that, it's really not too bad. First things first here, I'm going to tie up my wires so they don't get dunked in the water. I'm going to dunk my pump in and I'm going to prime it up. I'm going to let this tube fill up so it's been wet and it's got all of that water in there. And then I'm going to go ahead and re-bend my copper a little bit so I can get the right angle that I want for our pump to attach. So that is perfect right there. Bam! All I got to do is put a compression fitting on that bad boy and it's ready to go. So once again we've got our collar and our compression fitting nut. I knew that was gonna happen. So I drop my pump in the water. First things first we're gonna put our nut on there. <sighs> kind of wiggle it on there. Then we're gonna get our compression 
fitting collar and then we need our pump back so this is why I left the, the cords up here <laughs> I can just pull it back up so here everything just goes together nice and snug you just smash it all together and keep it nice and tight while you tighten it up I'm gonna get some hand tools and finish that off so this little guy was a little more tricky to get started because this was the compression fitting that I used from last year. So this was all new thread going on to old dirty thread from last year. So that ended up being a little more tricky than I thought, but I ended up getting it on. Nothing fell in the water. So we're going to get all of these lines ran and get this thing powered up and see what kind of heat we can put back into the greenhouse. So here comes the moment of truth with all this. We're gonna see if we can get this to kick on here. All we gotta do is take this, take this. I saw our line jump. So we've got 55 degree water going in, 53 degree water at the top here. So it's going to be coming back out of here after it goes up through our compost and then back down one whole side and then up the other side of the greenhouse to come through this here so it's got a lot of water to fill it's going to drain a bunch of water out of this tank so we've got our first bit of water coming out of here it took a while to get that filled it's always a long time to get that first fill with all of the system being empty still so we've got some decent water flow coming filling all the air bubbles in the line and filling this whole PEX line up because it goes from big PEX to little copper back to big PEX inside the greenhouse so decent flow rate feels like we got some decently warm water coming through there holding about 70 so I ended up coming out we're pushing about 80 or so degrees it's going down a little bit there but it was sitting right about 80 degrees pushing into this greenhouse this is tipped back up it needs to be more level to keep flowing and that water physically feels warm that is awesome that is awesome i'm going to make sure all of our seals are tight i saw one drop of water here so that lets me know i do have a little bit of a seal issue there this one's nice and tight so this compression fitting that one's good this one is a little bummed up i wonder if it's bent copper or something but other than that everything looks good through our jungle of wires here that I'm gonna clean up we've got this compression fitting holding tight that's where the hot water comes into the Ooh, that feels warm down there we're blowing a constant 80 degrees off of this intake pipe right here it physically feels warm and that's on day one of the Jean Payne startup so now that we've got our Jean Payne heater up and running built and everything's flowing we've got our water flowing we've got our air flowing we're doing everything we possibly can to harvest the heat off of that pile now we've got to worry about our transfer lines I'm gonna do that in a separate video and while we're on the subject of setting all these things up I've got this little copper dealio I made last year to go around my stove pipe there so we've got a small quarter inch pipe here quarter inch outer diameter and just doing the same exact thing you can downsize from a huge pex through a shark bite all the way to a small quarter inch compression fitting and then we'll be able to pump with one of our other solar systems or with a different add-on piece off this same system over to our stove to superheat this water and crank up the heat in the middle of winter so we can sink a ton of thermal mass energy as heat into this water throughout the night and before the night so it really really re-releases it and protects our greenhouse throughout the night we experimented with a ton of free heating with this stove and our john Payne last year and a lot of these little experiments are going to be redone and remade this winter and done a little bit better we've got a few heat exchangers and all types of heat related content and diy related content coming this winter so Getting all of this set up was a huge deal because this is my failsafe. This solar powered system, this autonomous compost heater is my failsafe. This thing keeps my greenhouse nice and steamy all winter long and I can experiment with other stuff while this thing is always going to run for me. And it pretty well always produces heat as long as you take the right steps to 
get it active and get a big enough pile going. So if anybody's got any questions, that's pretty much it today. We were just out here checking out how I set all this up, how I'm gonna get this water running, and how we're gonna actually pull the heat off of that compost heater. I showed everybody yesterday in the last video where we set the pile up and I pulled all the rings up and staggered all the layers of compost and wood chips and all of our lines, our water lines. And we got PEX lines we're gonna hook up to midwinter that are running out in the pile also heating up right now but not transferring anything, possibly a thermo siphon of some hot air through the PEX as it warms up. But we're gonna transfer from this water system to PEX eventually as we can use different parts of the compost for heat throughout different parts of the winter. So lots of experimenting going on and I'd like to thank all the new subscribers we've gotten recently. We are really, really thankful for everybody and let us know what we can do and what everybody wants to see. And if anybody has any questions, please drop them in the comments below. We're always trying to respond to everybody. No matter how big we get, we really wanna to touch base with everybody and that's what we were built on here is building a small community where we can all share these ideas and share what works, share what doesn't work and see what works for ourselves in each individual circumstance in all of our different grow zones. So I'd like to thank everybody for watching again and until next time, we've got Lots of free heating going on, lots of experiments. I'm gonna be setting up some cool stuff with these fans. Everything looking good in here. Lots and lots of work to do. I've got a ton of work to do, getting all that electricity ran, finding some lights to run in the greenhouse. So lots of updates coming from the greenhouse very soon.